Hello to us, our geek first. We are back here for the X Men '97 review. I'm the Clown Prince of Clones, Travis Snell. I'm joined by a lot of other Jean Grey fans or other fans. I'm the Goblin King, Kirkland Pathway. I'm the Brimstone Clone, Dylan Moss. I'm the Jean Doe, Taylor Field. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Luckily, I think we got a juicy episode to go. Thank you, everyone, that tuned in last week. It was our second biggest episode of the uh, month. I'm not sure where it's going to uh, rank throughout the whole year, but you never know with animation what's going to go over. But uh, yeah, there was some big episode hype for that. So thank you very much. I hope you'll stick with us for the remainder of the series because I think it's going to be a very good one. Head down below for everything you need to know our audio, our video links, most importantly, our Patreon, where you get episodes ad-free, early, exclusive. You get a nice RSS feed that features all said things. You can do things like join the After 9 tier, where last week we did a poker game, and that's lots of fun. You can join on lots of polls that are coming up in the near future. Get a lot of content that is sometimes years early, so good stuff there, lots of updates. And as usual, we just did a newscast, so that, if you're listening to this, go back. Lots of good Marvel stuff in there, talking about Spider-Man 4, World War Hulk film, maybe. Um, what else? What else are we talking about there? Uh, Alien Romulus, you know? Yeah, trailers, uh, yeah. good stuff. And then Side Quest this week features some Peach action, you know? So, and then... Uh, good peaching it up. Peaching it out, yeah. Dylan, where can they... Uh, they wish list a certain something. You can wish list my game, Potion Problems, on Steam. There is a trailer out there now. Oh, you have no more. It's usually in your name. Yeah, there. you know what? I, like you don't have you don't have to bring it up like every episode at this point if you don't want. Like okay. it's you know I don't want to be it's like that guy. Travis. I'll leave never, it in my. <laughs> never I'll leave it in my it name. And that way, if we get the YouTube traffic, they can see it and wonder. But you know, I don't want to hold up our newscast. That's gonna add an extra hour or two per week you know if we did every episode wow, it's so. a lot of hours so mm-hmm. there you go never to be mentioned again last time go <laughs> wishlist it but uh yes check out I'll bring it up when i have an update <laughs> exactly so yeah description everything you know taylor field what do you think about this episode non-spoiler thoughts if someone's not seen it we will take a little break intermission pause and let people catch up but i think most people have probably seen it what did you think of this uh some big reveals going on here this week yeah, I I was not sure what we're going to get into after the conclusion of episode two last week. I was like, I'm, I'm not familiar with the storyline and, and you were alluding to some things last week, Travis, um, based on the comics of what could be coming in, like what storyline they're going to be tackling. It's something that I'm very, very unfamiliar with. So getting into where we're at now, it was a fantastic episode. There are some stuff that I was just visually not expecting and it blew my mind. I was, I was like, Oh, this is, this is like very cringy in a good way. And then there were some comedic moments that I really liked too. But yeah, there's some, there's some crazy shit for only being episode three and the amount of stirring that's gone on in this pot, it blows my mind. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm very happy with this episode and just where we're at with our characters, I, I think it, it's fantastic. It really, really is fantastic. They drop so many cool little things to it as well that just really add a lot more to our characters' development. And we're like, especially with, like with Logan after last week's episode, there was a brief little scene with him that I thought was really, really crazy. And overall, just trying to figure out how far. Um, oh, that's kind of a spoiler. Just, to, just to kind of the backtrack timeline. from this episode the in the to- yeah in the timeline and see where things transitioned is just something I, I like looking at that kind of stuff and I I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to examine that and hopefully we get to explore that in future episodes of the season. But uh overall I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm over the moon. This episode rose above last week's so I am I'm super, super happy with where we're going. Dylan, were you over that moon with uh Mr. Field? I was over that moon. Yeah this uh this show is so fucking good. I'm just shocked at how good it is. Uh, the amount of stuff that is jammed into whatever it is, like a 25 minute long episode. It's so impressive to me. Uh, yeah, this just answered so many questions. It's involving various storylines. Uh, like this was so scary and like so mm-hmm. adult. Uh, I don't know. It's just like it's blowing away my expectations of what I had for this show. So I'm I'm very impressed so much fun stuff that I can't wait to break down here. Some crazy character stuff. And, you know, as we mentioned, like, Cyclops Gene, like, kind of got the short end of the stick in that original show. Like, Gene got some more, like, Dark Phoenix stuff and whatnot. But for the most part, like, those characters in general have been, like, done dirty on, on 
on the television screen. I'm sure they're great in the comics, but mm -hmm. between its movies or whatever, the old TV show, it seems like those are always characters that don't quite get the, the love uh, given to them. And like, man, already in just this one episode, like the amount of backstory and character development given to Gene is just awesome. And now I'm just, I, I love this side of this character. So uh, really, really impressed uh, with what we got here. Goblin. Goblin. Well, it's Goblin King, actually. And this show is king. I am blown away. I am well over the moon. I'm at Saturn's rings by now with the, when it comes to this show. I, I think that just watching this, it, like, brings down the original show of just, like, comparing, <laughs> like, the quality of the stories of the characters. The animation is, just, like, I am such a sucker for animation. And this show is so top tier. It is, like... No spoilers, but we get action in the, in this episode, and like I'm just frothing at the mouth. I'm <laughs> like I'm not even juice. I'm full on froth and full on foam out of the the cracks of my mouth. And yeah, wow. I I <laughs> I'm looking like Norman. I'm looking like Norman yeah. getting the goblin. Uh, Kirk, uh, why are you formula. so tired? Well, last night I was. <laughs> <laughs> It's flashed to Kirkland watching X Men '97. How come we don't need to add that drop? Because a lot of drop. How come we've never had that drop? I'm so surprised. <laughs> oh, I'll add it to the drive. Um, <laughs> no, I I am so impressed with this show and what it's doing, and just like even even certain threats from like the old show, like they just they feel elevated uh, now in 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 this newer version of the show, and um, yeah, I'm like I'm just so impressed that they're able to really really deliver that. I I want to get as many seasons if not more of what we got for that original show don't be greedy now don't be greedy now but like we're three episodes in and i'm like fuck i, I just can't wait already for what's to come this season let alone next season so yeah i won't spoil my thumbs but they're certainly erect <laughs> <laughs> but could be down right could, could be down could be erect could be the the emma stone hit me with the emma or the emma frost and the emma stone, <laughs> the emma stone. i'm like trying to think of a poor things uh, scene. There has to be someone out there. Send me a picture of Emma Stone giving the thumbs down. It has to be out there. But uh, yeah, no, this was great. This is one I was waiting for for a bit because, as I said, when I saw that baby, X Men fans knew okay, someone was up. And again, what I'm just happy about is just how quick we're getting this stuff. There's not like a big lull. There's not. There is a buildup, but like in a way, there is some stuff at the beginning. Like we move very fast in the first even two minutes of just Beast just exposition dumps, and then the episode's on its way. So if anything, I would maybe make I would love it if they were like even five minutes longer, just for a little breathing. But it's okay because the rest of the stuff is so good. I appreciate how like horny this episode is like there's a lot of just imagery whether it's outfits whether it's uh, alluded things to what characters might be doing i was not expecting this at all like i was expecting maybe what we said before like oh yeah gamut's not gonna act that way and he's not but kind of the story is dictating that like it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense for him to be acting that way currently right now and then they're doing stuff that's way more risque than the other series and i think there'd be the odd kind of illusion of something it'd be mostly gambit who would be you know making his sexual flirtations but just even some scantily clad individuals i'm just very surprised the show's going to certain routes and i'm gonna enjoy it because i don't think we're gonna get these in the movies and now i'm starting to like brace myself for how good the show is <laughs> now I, I just see the narrative in three years we're like uh it's no x-men 97 this live action movie like i really hope again they see this and go oh, let's get a little more risky but no great character stuff uh fun reveals hitting on very classic storylines and there's more to come uh very some good imagery uh i'm trying to think and there's just they constantly i think do a good job of Getting into a, you know, just in these three episodes, getting into a plot, moving forward, and then the end of the episode leaving a nice little hook. You know, you're like, okay, it's a bunch that we talked about last week. This is the time where, not that I'd want it, I guess, for the review cast, but I would take a binge. If there was a higher Disney Plus tier right now that had a binge, I want all these episodes to see how they do them. Because even myself, like this storyline, it's a very classic storyline, but they're always doing things a little bit differently, or you don't know what they're going to do, right? So it's that fun anticipation, but uh, yeah, no, I think they another one that just nailed to the moon and back, you know, that, that ball can't even be seen. Saturn, whatever, hit the sun, wherever, how far you can go, it went there. So uh, yeah. We're going to take our first break, and then we'll be back with spoilers. We'll be right back. All right. Let's break it down. We're just going to jump into the big thing right away. The baby. Last week, you know, Jean Grey and Cyclops had a baby, or did they? Because, you know, someone knocked at the door, said they're Jean Grey. And this is what I was talking about. Literally 30 seconds of the episode, Beast is like, I've run the DNA. 
you are not a real person. You're a clone. And this is the real gene. It felt like it was like, wow. We, like, again, I'm happy they use all 33 minutes, but it was moving very, very fast, which, again, I do appreciate because we get into it. But, yeah, they do the big reveal that the person that Gene is current or the person Scott is with and had the baby with is not Gene. It is a clone. They have not revealed how long the clone is around for, etc. They just know that this is a clone of Gene Grey that was created by good old Mr. Sinister. Uh, and that's who Scott impregnated. And the woman that showed up at the doorstep is the original Jean Grey. They share the same thoughts. They're both murky on a few things, like when they are taken and certain memories. Uh, so they're pretty much almost the same person to an extent. Maybe uh, Madeline Pryor, which is her name, is a bit more on the darker side. But uh, yeah, that was the big reveal that this baby, and also the baby, uh, <laughs> it's such a while to say, got sick because Sinister is trying to enhance this baby and make it indestructible. They stopped this process of uh, making uh, Nathan getting some techno virus or whatever they call it some sort of uh organism that's messing with his body so bishop takes him into the future so lots went on here mr feel what did you feel about the uh just initial reveal that this wasn't our gene gray also we only spent as of right now yes two episodes with her but like the show said we don't know how far this goes back so and i i don't know if the show will ever answer that they might i almost wish they might not just leave it hanging because i think that's more fun mm -hmm. for viewers i to think the ending had like perfect ambiguity to it where they're like i don't know which one of us married scott i don't know which yeah. one of us was the dark phoenix i i it's a you know fun callback to the original show but i also think that's just a perfect way to end it as well and still leaving the door open for more mm -hmm. yeah i gosh seeing the how things kind of started off here and just the the twist of like okay this this gene is the fake gene this is the real gene i was not i was just not expecting mr sinister for, uh, to be behind this kind of like multiple gene kind of thing here i, I wasn't sure what was going to be going on i wasn't sure if it was time travel because we have bishop in here and there's time right. travel stuff that's involved too so i was just i was not sure where we're going but i everything that was just behind the origin story with this gene doe i was really really enjoying um I'm trying to see if i have some notes here on it yes the one thing i, I thought was kind of peculiar was because uh fake gene was scanning the mind of real gene and i was surprised like how did they not how did she not identify those mr sinister because as she's scanning you get that quick flash as she screams at Mr. Sinister's face like giggling or or whatever when <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, I really fought you guys over this time didn't I Gene <laughs> but I, I, I really felt for Scott it's just crazy because like you <laughs> I, technically they are the same person but they're not they're different people and yeah he's just he, he's married he's had this kid he slept with this woman and how did Madison take this, this news Taylor hmm how would Madison take this news? If I was a clone? No, she's a clone. Same situation. You're a Scott. That threw me off because, like, what, have I a brother? Like, when you said that? <laughs> no, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you are Cyclops, the excellent character. Okay. Yeah. You married this uh, Madison, but you never know where the... Really <laughs> <laughs> near your brother no i meant uh, like yeah you you killed married taylor's and, brain <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you've had a child with you don't know who you know that would that would be crazy i mean uh i don't like, know do you think gene and scott the new like the real gene do you think they now just pick up and they're a okay moving forward you can't you absolutely can't <laughs> and, and i mean if this was a week a week maybe even i would go back like six months even six months sure but i think that's the limit once you wow. get to that year mark and beyond no that if if it, you weren't there all throughout that point and backwards then that's just like it, eventually it just it out <laughs> we got okay. follow-up questions we'll, we'll get there yeah. we'll get there. <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> eventually it just for me it kind of outweighs the the latter and i say that because what I'm meaning that you have, yeah, I'm assuming most of the adult relationship and time that they spend together is with the fake gene. And then there's still lots of time that they spent together as kids and they spent together like the real gene and, and, and Scott Summers. But I just feel like the being as adults and the development and the, the, the relationship growth that they've gone through in certain battles, having a kid together, there's certain things that has really grown their relationship. And so he's formed this relationship with this clone of Gene. Now this clone of Gene 
could be acting totally different. Her wanting to leave the mansion, that could be just because what the clone is deciding for herself. Because you have two clones together, or not two clones, but you have two, you have an, two people, <laughs> the same person. <laughs> but it doesn't mean they're always going to be thinking the same and doing the same things. Yes, they have the same memories and the same kind of origin to a slight degree, but uh, I, I feel like this clone wanting to leave forge her own path uh, that we saw in episode two. I think that's totally justified as being what she wants in her decision. Whereas this other Jean Grey wants to always stay at the X mansion. So Scott has built this relationship with that new gene. So this mm-hmm. other gene that came back, no, Logan can just swoop right on in. That's, that's <laughs> up for grabs. So the OG gene you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. My follow up for you was, what do you think is worse, Taylor? Someone being with someone for five years or someone being with someone only for nine months, but producing a child with said person. So, so what's, what's hard to come back from? Oh, it's still the clone scenario, though, right? It's still a clone. So either okay. you're with the clone for only nine months, because you were saying like, oh, if it, you're like your barometer was. So like, they were swapped year, right at co- like before consummation. Your barometer was like, oh, if it's a year over, you can't come back from that. So I'm saying it's under a year, it's nine months, but you produced a baby with said mass and clone, or you spent five years with a mass and clone, but no baby. What's worse? Oh, it, obviously having the kid because there's just so much more that you have to examine with that situation, especially especially if the real person comes back and they're like, what did you do? It's like, well, I did you, so I thought, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that way if you're in the scenario. <laughs> no, Don't what I do. You just tap into your like, adrenochrome character there. What did I do? <laughs> you. <laughs> no. All right, Kirkland. Yeah, uh, my follow up was well, from the press. Yeah, yeah my, my follow up question was going to be like, I guess it's just kind of my stance on it too. Like for like the whole clone scenario, especially because the two genes were discussing that they don't even really know when they were swapped. Yeah. So like, why would that like affect so much? Like from Scott's perspective, right? Because it's like he'll just marry like, them both. But like, like the clone of Gene has the memories of Gene. So, like, it is just Gene, right? But then you get, like, a poor thing situation going on where the clone of Gene could be, like, a year old, and that's kind of fucking gross. But, like, uh, if she has all of her memories of her life, like, she's not really a year I old. I know, but it's it's still just, like, this, like, <laughs> two-year-old weird... Mr. Sinister. Like, yeah. I wouldn't feel good about that. <laughs> like, they But, like, it's not like, like she has, like, a two-year-old's brain. Like, it is in poor things. No, like, she's she doesn't. Fully she probably at one point educated. Oh, Man, we should get like an episode of Sinister in the Defoe role and Jean Grey like walking around like just pissing all over. Die, the place. die! <laughs> <laughs> I met him just with that voice like, oh no. <laughs> uh, so I think that's yeah, why like, though it's still not the original person you you men fall, fell in love with, and it's like kind of a trick. Like that is the person know? that you fell in love with because we don't even know when they were swapped. So like. But then at that point, after they're swapped, they're going to start making their own decisions and their own choices that that right. other gene wouldn't have made. They That's where they start to break off and break well, apart. Okay. Right? Because even I the clone it's... says, like, you know, we've always wanted to leave. So she makes it, she insinuates that mm. Gene also wanted to leave the X-Mansion, right? But is the idea, too, that, like, the whole time they've been, I guess, telekinetically linked so that, like, the they new... They have to be, right? So, yeah, because obviously yeah. if we don't know the point in which they've been swapped, like, the one who's in the lab would obviously have not like been gaining new memories, but I guess the idea is that they're just yeah. linked that whole time. So any new memory that's formed is one that she's experiencing through like her, you know, uh, vision mind that she can kind of perceive. Cause that'd be uh, the so giveaway, she right? Like she's there. Yeah. If like, Oh, remember last week when we played pool and she's like, no, I don't think, yeah, okay. Yeah. This is when we swapped. Yeah. yeah know, it'd be different right? if like yeah. they just didn't really remember anything or they both had a really foggy memory, but if they can remember it clear as day, then that's, mm-hmm. that's gotta be how it works. But yeah, I mean, like that's a different physical body though, Kirkland. Like that, there's more to it than just the mind. Yep. You know, you could debate like, do people have souls? And if so, that'd be a different soul that you're with at these different times too. But it's definitely a different physical body. But like, it's the same. It's the same uh, like cells, right? Like it's it's just duplicated. No, it's, so it is the exact same. Because cells change for... on the daily, don't they? And wouldn't you just make moment? that same case for like a twin then? If you're saying like it's like a similar well, no. cell, but no. No, because the twin is a the clone same. of the other person. It, like, but they start birth, with the same cells, but yeah. then as time goes on, they start <laughs> so to then, deviate. So yeah, then, then it goes back to what you guys were saying for like the point of the clones. When they realize that they were clones, that's where everything changed. So now they are like their yes. own paths. But like before that point, like it, it is just the exact same being, I guess. 
I get. Yeah, I guess it depends on how good you think Sinister is at his uh, at his, at his, at his cloning. cloning skills, right? I guess I not very good. good since Beast was able to kind of carbon date it, right? Like he, yeah. there was a bit of a, a trail there, right? Okay, yeah. good enough though. In, unless someone did an experiment, no one would have figured it out though. She would have just kept living her life, and I that think Gene for a solid few hours. Still, Gene Doe was still thought for a solid few hours she was. Uh, or sorry, the right. clone Gene thought she was. No, no, this is a lie. She has to be the fake one, you know. Like the hardest thing for me was just that like they like they do just remember cert like the original Gene knows about the Phoenix Force yep. and the everything. clone Gene knows about the Phoenix Force and they don't know which one experienced mm-hmm. that and like I, I I just think it's it's hard for like to differentiate like the two characters at any point before the show right it's like mm-hmm. it's like scroll roadie <laughs> like, like it's it's that sort of thing but without it like actually being like like written because like back in that sh- back in the original show like they never had this idea of like eventually making these two genes so that was just always the one gene but now in hindsight that could have been a clone gene or i guess it would have been whenever sinister captured them right of course this is coming from the guy who kills his girlfriend and clones her you know i knew kirkman <laughs> would have this defense and stuff see I, like i don't the think you're wrong guy, yeah. I, don't, yeah, clone, I don't think you're wrong but i still think it would cause some drama in the household even for 100 percent. No, okay 100%. i thought you were trying I to agree. say like oh it's all good let's just call it even like uh, three like, three way two shades let's do it <laughs> yeah like i think there's some quite especially that like I thought this was I thought this was done. I had reserved to like, hey, we're moving on a different path. But I am I wrong in thinking they fully just insert Wolverine back into this equation with that little scene, her and Jean? No, they did. Like, with no, that- I I have a counter argument. Like, are Wolverine and Morph not like getting it on? That oh shower God. scene was really <laughs> oh, suspicious yeah. to me. Oh, we talked yeah. about it last week, right? You need yeah, to get no, something I, for you. He I think they might out. be hooking up. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, Wolverine but, obviously still has feelings for for Jean, but that doesn't mean he's he is a complex person. We all are, you know. He could have feelings in two separate ways. But this is like the Scott thing, where you know he's with Morph, who's maybe turn or they're maybe turning into Jean, but now Wolverine can get the real Jean. But right. I, I think maybe they're friends with benefits in my head canon, but I was not expect. That's what's strange too, because we talk about how the clones would react. That's why I feel like the clone has maybe been with us for a while because I don't think that clone was into Wolverine anymore. But when she reads Wolverine's mind and she goes, I didn't know you felt that way. And he says, what is the quote? It's even deeper than that. I got the full on quote Mm -hmm. here. Uh, Let's see. I mean that much to you. And then Wolverine goes more. And then they have a longing look. And then there's an interruption. So what if he he actually just said more? More. How do you mean to me? Morph. Yeah, he got cut off. But I was not expecting that. So I literally feel, and Wolverine's done this before. He's been scummy a few times where like, oh, Gene's like, you know, like in a downtrodden place. So I think meat is back on the menu and we're getting the, we're getting the three way back. And I'm not mad at it because I always love that dynamic. And it is a kind of new dynamic because maybe this Gene would have felt different. Do I think her and Scott still end up together? Yes. But uh yeah i was not expecting us that's what i mean in general i was not expecting wolverine to get play like that again i thought for sure mm-hmm. that was done and now i don't know man it, it's gonna be an awkward yeah. mansion situation between that triangle and gamut rogue magneto fuck man yeah. that's morph oh, too and morph to the morph. quad yeah. yeah especially with um uh the baby being gone now too yeah. and like not knowing when or how long that baby will be gone there isn't necessarily that thing that would bind gene and scott together if they're just not right. vibing after all this and then they're it just messes with their mind and they can't look at each other the same way mm-hmm. uh, yeah like that it seems like the perfect time for that thing to to pick back up so i get you're probably right there i just i i kind of want to go down this morph path with wolverine because that's so weird and interesting oh, to me yeah. that but it definitely scene? is more of like friends with benefits as you mentioned like that seems mm-hmm. like more the energy um, we can still, I guess, get that if there's some flirting going on with Gene, but I don't know. That's that's a very compelling. Tr- what? It's not even a triangle anymore. It's like a fucking rhombus at this point. Yeah, right? it's spring break at the X Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's getting it on. He just hates his life. He's like <laughs> all stuck the, in the lab. Literally, because <laughs> yeah. Storm's gone. You got Sunspot and Jubilee watching scary movies to get like oh, yeah. everybody ha- is pining out for someone or has someone except for Beast. You know, so he like, maybe maybe he'll be more rebound guy. You know, maybe there's something there. I don't know, but mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, I'm just like, I'm going to percentage because it never happened in the original series, if I recall. Are we going to get a Wolverine Jean Grey kiss in this show? We didn't get it this season? Let's do it. Yes. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, too. I'm 55 yeah. 45 where I am. I f- On which camp? Yes, it's going to happen. Ooh. But I'm just wondering is she going to realize it or is Wolverine going to be finally a good guy and be like, no, like you should be with Scott and stuff? Because the other thing is we got a three parter finale. So, like, oh, and that's sinister based. So, a lot of stuff can happen in mm-hmm. that go around. I don't know if that means Pryor comes back. I don't know, but I'm. I'm Jones, and I'm so excited. I I'm ready for it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I well, here's another question. So, mm-hmm. and this is kind of jumping to the end, but we're kind of jumping everywhere already. Uh, Bishop takes the baby to the future to fix the baby. He he says that okay, I have someone who can help find the problem here. <laughs> I thought that would be Forge, but then Forge <laughs> is in the present day meeting up with Storm, and now there could be two. It's a time travel thing, like. Mm. What do you think? What do you guys think is going on there? Who's Bishop talking about? Imagine he shows up and Forge just gone, and the Summers baby dies, and he's. he's oh just, my god, that's actually really interesting. I like timing. that a lot. Forge unknowingly, he's like, <laughs> yeah, it seems like Bishop's just part of the X Men now, in, yeah. in whatever twenty nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, I, I wonder how I couldn't yeah. find that. It's in the name of the show, but yeah, that that would be a really interesting idea, and then we kind of get this subplot of of Bishop in the future with this baby trying to figure th- things out because. As you, we were talking. Well, we were talking about in the last episode, the one and two episode combined. Is like, yeah, what is the what is Bishop? Is he a main member of the show? We weren't too sure, and it seems like, oh, okay, well, if he's just piecing off into the future, maybe he's yeah. not part we of the never main got show. That but answer. this would be a fun <laughs> narrative to, I think, and I think with the structure of this show, where it seems like we're not going to necessarily have just like standalone episodes, we could have little mini arcs throughout this. I could see that in, a, in throughout the next few episodes, like maybe getting a scene or two here or there of of bishops mm. happenings that I, I have to go through the episode titles to see like, Ooh, this seems like the Bishop episode in the future. And I don't yeah. necessarily just want an episode of him and not the rest of the X-Men, but I don't know. Maybe there's a bunch of other fun characters in the future that we could uh, hang well, out with too. Can it be possible though, that like where he's going in the future, like forge is there, right? Like, yeah. th- like this could just be Time's a different a relative, right? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, like he was could... explaining that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, because I, I was with you. I was really <laughs> just surprised, I think, by that Forge reveal by the end because I was 100% convinced that he was going to see Forge. I'm like, all right, we're going to get Forge in the show. And then... Uh, but, uh, but Okay, but sorry to cut you in on you there because, like, as we it. talked about, like, Bishop, if we're talking about time travel, in 97, Bishop's probably, like, a, a little kid, right? right? In terms of the time travel stuff. Yeah. Forge would then be as well. I'm assuming Forge is a character that was, you know, an adult canonically in that future time and did, discovered all this yeah. tech and started time traveling after we, I don't think we've ever actually seen forge time travel, right? Even in the old show, he's always just back there at the base. So yeah. to yeah. me, this seems like it is that, that forge. Cause it seems like present day forge would be like a 10 year old or something. Right. I think so. it's just tough because like, I, I guarantee you in days of future past in that time, they gave us probably a year, right? I'm just not remembering what the year was. So we could probably in our head do the math. Like who knows? Maybe Bishop's just still like an embryo right now or something, but that yeah. is, I mean, Forge was looking like maybe like early twenties potentially here, but I, I, I don't know if that would be enough. Like it seems like the, the jump seems higher than that, but maybe you're right. Maybe we do need to crunch some numbers on it. I, I think there's a chance that the storm forge, guy is just that day because i do think they purposely make forge look a little bit older than bishop and if we're judging on 90s animation them making someone look 40 might think that and they're thinking might be like oh this guy looks like he's 60 like that i i i'm just saying like what they're thinking maybe right back then so i bet this is present day forge and he's gonna go back to the forge that's always at the base camp sitting there looking for answers giving them information or it'll just be some other character hell could even be his sister right that has some sort of cure that could help out with this sort of thing i do think this will all i don't know if the specifics will be answered but i think it'll all be answered this season yeah, I'd agree with that. Sure. And, and my theory was right, that, and I was disappointed. It's not a big con, so I won't give it major points, but I knew Bishop, because this happens in the comics, where the baby gets sick and Bishop has to take it back. And I'm like, man, <laughs> are they going to give Bishop a reason on the team? No, he was literally just hanging out there to be a plot device to get the baby back. So that was what, kind if, of, what if uh, Bishop goes to the future mm-hmm. to, with the baby, and then, shit, Forge isn't here. i got to go back to present day. I'll leave the baby with... Uh, Who's who else is in the future? I guess we don't really know. His who sister, else is there. right? Is Shard in the future still? Didn't I she die so. or something? No, I think she. Di- I think she died in one 
reality, but then they save some stuff. And remember, he got that vision this episode of like, you're leaving, you're not in your own time anymore and stuff. Yeah, so but I, that was just the Mr. Sinister, like yeah, magic. Uh, but I think she's still talking. kicking. I think okay. she's still alive. Or maybe I thought she, she died for some reason. Perished. Uh, I don't know. But either way, there's got to be someone there that he could, you know, leave to babysit yeah. this kid. And he comes back to present day, potentially. Um, that could make sense, too. Because I, I agree with you. I'd be a bit bummed if we, if this was like the last ish of Bishop, if he just is, disappears for a few episodes. Because once again, in this hell sequence, in this episode, I love his powers now. Like, I'm all in oh, on yeah. Bishop. I think he's oh. so fun. I love that sequence where he's. Just juice gobbled me. up all that, all that crackers and juice, and just like spewed <laughs> it back out, back at these demons. That was great. You're welcome. Yeah, you know they say that to each other. I love that. Shouts out mm-hmm. to Halo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was um, not expecting what was going on with, or what was gonna be going on with the baby. I'm, I'm not too surprised in hindsight that the baby like went to the future. I, I, I think it's a good, just uh, way to put that variable like out of the x-mansion you know so like we like because the baby just is a major variable right like we were talking about before the show even started of like is this going to just keep gene like kind of out of the action or like what's going on there so i I am like somewhat glad that it's kind of (laughs) just away for now Mm -hmm. um i don't know anything about the storyline of what's going on here I, i haven't googled nathan or anything like this but just like and I could be completely wrong with this, just my assumption. But like, part of me, when he goes to the future, I'm like, man, something's gonna happen, and then he's gonna be, like, next time we see him, he's not gonna be a baby anymore. There's gonna be like an older, old, older Nathan or something like that, and that would be a really interesting uh, plot point if if that is to what's going to occur. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of sad to see Bishop disappear. Hopefully, he's not gone for long. Um, like you were saying, Dylan, like when he was just juiced up, I, I was, I was like, man, Bishop is on such another caliber of a character than, uh, I definitely gave him credit for because he had the cool harmonica, you know, he had the badass effect with the, with the cool gun, but like, that was really it for him. I you guess guys time feeling travel. a little bad now. We didn't have an X-Men Legends game. I tried, but Bishop, man, <laughs> us nineties kids, he's a fucking cool character. I want the hair back, but like. Yeah, you want, you want to be juiced. Think about all the power up moves you can do with Bishop. You know, I believe well, it now after this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this show. we'll redo that episode. We'll completely cancel that. So year 55. for Days of Future Past timeline okay. is two thousand fifty five. So I don't think that's Forge, or he is like an eighty year old man if he's like in his twenties here. So I, like it's so I think that's <laughs> definitely future Forge coming yeah. back then. Yeah. Now Sinister's why is Forge. he going back? I don't know. I have this baby. Can you fix it, Storm? Wow. Okay. Like, I got no powers. <laughs> well, it could be. Well, he. I guess Storm. He. Would he bump into a Storm in the future? Because maybe that's if. If Storm loses her powers here, then retroactively it changes the future. So Forge in the future could see like, oh, this Storm yeah, has lost true. her powers. So I'm going to go back to maybe when she some, lost her powers. There's some weather disaster in the future, and he has to come back to get Storm to help if, save the day. Oh, maybe. we had Storm's powers. <laughs> yeah. Taylor, any thoughts on uh, Bishop baby going away before we move on? Uh, I, I guess it's it's fitting to kick the baby out for the time being while we focus on our other characters for and I, I guess it alleviates Bishop but I was more more excited to kind of have him as being part of the crew and seeing what he can get up to and yeah he's just popping off with his super juice it was crazy to see mm, the uh don't say the that. idea though of this <laughs> the baby now so was Mr. Sinister just waiting for this moment? Was, did he let Gene go and then chose this as the opportune moment? Why didn't he just act? Like, you didn't need the real Gene to show up. Because the real Gene showing up is what really kind of, like, started to stir the pot and make I think them that's suspect. a mistake. They didn't show us that, but I don't think Gene Grey getting out was a sinister plan. Okay, because I guess I we're still like, on, like, day free, two. My child. We're on, like, day two of the baby being born, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, which I have to say, that baby is very fucking aware for being born. Dude, that is, like, like a six-month-old six child. At least. At least. Well, look at his parents, yeah. though. Two top-tier mutants. It's going to come that out That thing is more hair than that Travis That is not Snow. a regular, uh, <laughs> regular <laughs> organic <laughs> baby right there. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's literally not, though, in right? Sinister, it's sinister enhanced bat. genes. No pun intended. So. Which I did think Mr. Sinister threw into the fucking cauldron when he closed the lid down on top of I was shocked. Good. By yeah, that. I was shocked too. <laughs> it's like a bubbling, bubbling brew about to, <laughs> like, like that's when you're adding in your carrots to your stew, and he just tosses in the fucking uh, baby, puts the puts the yeah. lid on too, and then yeah. of course it's like a fucking back to tank and, or, or whatever. That and was. then yeah. man, when Cyclops was there, and like I know he's got better control of his lasers than he ever has, but shooting a laser at that fucking <laughs> tank with the baby, and it was like a huge. 
humongous <laughs> risk and not one we're taking. Yeah, not in this my situation. Job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was bold play for sure. Mm-hmm. I did really enjoy that scene though of when they're explained. I like they don't really ask Scott. They just tell him like this is what we're gonna do and have to do. And I love that we've we've had some I think critiques about handling his father relationship and it being very light, but still him referring back to him being abandoned and he's not gonna do that. And I love that he doesn't stop them, but he does like, I'm not going to be part of this. And he walks out because it, it's like so layered where there's there is like a bit of cowardice to it. of Like he's not going to say goodbye to his child, but he's doing that because he doesn't actively want to say goodbye to the child and feel like he's giving up on it. So like it's a very layered moment when he walks out. And again, the show's doing wonders for Scott Summers. So I, I love that moment and I love that. Again, we don't know what's going to happen, but he, him and Gene seem very unsure. They just get back in that bedroom and he's looking at a, like, that's what we're talking about before though, right? Where he, sure they can have the same memories, but the lady that gave birth to his son is never going to be the one that's with us now. Right? So when he's looking at that photo of him, Madeline and the baby, it's like, no matter what happens, you can't change that. You can mm-hmm. do it again, but it's not going to be the same. You can't replace the child or those moments you have with her. Plus, he's always going to think now, especially because his relationship is screwed up. What if he thinks that he loved Madeline Pryor more? Right? If they, right. you know, she laughed at my jokes more. Or if this Jean Grey does kiss Wolverine. <laughs> she laughed at my jokes. Well, no, you never that, laugh at that's my little stuff that could fuck with someone like she this, right? She was happy with my penis size. Oh, <laughs> you never said that. Yeah, she never compared me to Logan. <laughs> but, like, that is a thing, right? If she, if Gene kisses Logan in his mind, he might be like, man, that Madeline Pryor, she never did anything like that to me. So yeah. I love that he just <laughs> looks like he's going through the shit at the end of this episode. And I just love it. I cannot wait to see. I feel like this, when the worst we've ever seen Scott Summers is when the Phoenix happened and Gene was dead and he was going to bars with Dazzler. I'm very curious to see what happens to Scott now. Like, cause I feel like this is even lower than that. Because, like sure. Gene's around, but it's awkward. He lost a child. He's not going to know if his child's alive or not. It could just got to the future and died. So it's just like what I love just the trauma already in episode three, Scott Summers has gone through. And uh, yeah. And again, how I know, I think we're gonna get follow up is just the fact that we have a, three-part finale that's sinister focus so i know it's not gonna be like oh maybe they'll just have one episode to resolve it all it's like no i think he might be mopey for a while but something good's gonna happen and like you guys said fuck man up sinister's just the best i cannot wait Mm -hmm. to get that motherfucker in live action i love that too and scott shot him they did that thing again where his like body broke and all his guts were bubbling but uh yeah sinister just a maniacal motherfucker and i think they did the voice perfectly again too where i think it's a different actor but it sounds like pretty much close enough to what it was that robotic yeah. voice or whatever so love sinister yeah no i mean that moment when he taps into the the red gem in her head and starts controlling her and then that whole sequence after is just amazing but yeah like i love that just the horror vibes of it like the way they shot that where they didn't like show him for a bit he was always yeah. just kind of lurking in the shadows there before you actually see him uh and that, the way he's just in their head is 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 great stuff but yeah man like that that sequence when every character is having some different, just demented vision of like their worst nightmare. Uh, and it's just like perfectly cuts right to their core of something that they're insecure about or something that they're worried about. The thing that would just affect them most was so, so good. Uh, like Gambit's vision. I mean, there's all of them, but like, yeah, Gambit's <laughs> vision of just seeing like Rogue and Magneto and they're kind of just like, like their skin is like melting into each other and they're like forming into one. And I, I what does, what does rogue say? What is the line that she says there? Oh, Go back remember. to the swamp or something. Along oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. It's so Terrible. good. Um, but yeah, yeah, like all that whole sequence is just freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the brain trippiness of, of just what was going on. And like, it felt a lot more mature than I think had, yeah. like we had seen anything in the original show. So, uh, that's just like I think all of these elements are just on such a higher caliber than what what that original show was, and you know that that show was great. <laughs> I had a good time going through it, but like this one is just it's hitting on all calibers, and it it seems like they really, you know, like yeah, they they just they just turned up and, and turned up. That was a weird way to say it. They, they just turned, turned it up. up. <laughs> <laughs> they turned it up, and uh, yeah, it's. It's really just delivering. I really liked all the the horror elements that were involved with just like the initial appearance of Sinister. Um, of course, you have B say like, only the only word to describe it would be <laughs> Sinister. <Yeah. laughs> and then yeah. it's like, oh, I know who's coming. But uh, even just like when 
he's talking on the uh like the baby monitor to gene or i guess madeline uh like initially and then just like him appearing in the shadows she turns around he's just not there like i i loved all that stuff and sinister is like a truly terrifying looking character so yes. I, I i love that they're like they're just making them seem even even scarier and um like you know we've 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 experienced sinister throughout the original show so much and I, I, I really like this villain. Uh, for being someone that just really had no idea who that was before we even started the retro, I, man, like what a, what a creepy character, and I can't wait to eventually get them uh, in, in live action. It's going to be fin- fantastic. And they need to keep this vibe, like the scary vibe. Like yeah. That's what sets them apart. Like I haven't got a fucking Nightmare on Elm Street v- movie since... 2010 this is like the closest i've got like this whole sequence <laughs> of like because that's what nightmare at elm street is it's like it's freddy is sinister and all these kids are having nightmares about things they're scared about insecure about worried about and freddy takes advantage of that and that's like what he was doing here so it was like j- just perfect i uh, i can't say enough good things about this sequence the yeah th- i was not expecting any of this the horrific visuals that were popping off here you had uh rogue and magneto just fusing together and her hand moving up his body but like into his skin like it was just disgusting and would you believe watching the tv and that like the thing creature human like mm-hmm. crawled up and that that's just it's terrifying like it was like <laughs> like color out of space kind of thing too like our, oh it was just freaky 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 but when mr sinister first appeared there is the briefest of seconds when um i wrote down what he said on the uh the baby monitor because yeah at first on the baby monitor i thought it was actually beast that was talking like gene gray are you there <laughs> answers <laughs> he said like it kind of sounds like beast I'm like oh, okay no no it's it's sinister, he's just it's scaring sinister. the shit out of her <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but overall it's it was just fantastic it it's not something that I feel like we have seen. I, I think you said that, Kirk, in, in the the previous seasons. This is just uncharted territory for this show, and it was oh, it was really mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, I liked getting the just the P, the PTSD that Morph has yes. Yes. from seeing Sinister, and I liked getting to see the OG uh, Morph later on. That was so <laughs> cool. Morph back into that version with like the yeah. deep you know, like bags <laughs> under the eyes, like hasn't slept, just been slaving away for Sinister for months at this point, and seeing that was was really fun. Uh, what was what was going on with Beast? What was the, that vision of that big yellow thing in the elevator? I can't. I don't remember that much, and because it didn't even seem like that anything. scary. It was like a little he, bit he, gross, but he wasn't. Particularly he wasn't very scary. Like, like, I guess yeah. it's taken or whatever the hell he said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not enough room for the two of us. Beast had nothing. Beast is scared of nothing, so it's like I couldn't get to him, you know. But yeah, I, mm-hmm. I didn't. I couldn't. I didn't find any symbolism in it. Maybe there's something there, but. It's a yeah. good thing Storm wasn't there because it would have been like a little box. He would have put her in a box there. right away. <laughs> yeah. Sinister yeah. knows oh, yeah. what to do. He knows like that, that's the thing with Sinister, and that's where it's like even so fucked up. Like that's why I'm excited that these reveals have happened because like they like he may I don't know if he made, but like the clone is the one that suggests the name for the baby. That name is like Mr. Sinister's real name, like Nathaniel. That is his name. So it's like, mm. that's so fucked up. <laughs> that, like, that's I love that we get the classic, what I love about Sinister. He's like, oh, I got your genes fine. Like he has a whole speech about genes and the DNA when he's looking at this baby. And like I said, he made her name the baby after himself. Like he's just a fucking, he like, it's like I said, a joke to say Sinister, but yeah, man, he's, he's so good. I'm, I'm really curious to see where, uh, this is going to go and how much more he's going to pop up. So, and I like that he was just kind of like the puppet master in this episode. Yeah. Like he, he is like just the man in the shadows, like pulling the strings for the most part. He has, um, you know, the goblin queen, <laughs> like, like kicking ass for the most part. And I, I guess that was kind of his role for the most part. I, it just seemed like he had a lot more screen time of him just like, like, not hidden in the shadows in the original mm-hmm. show. So I, I did like this kind of uh, secret, secret version of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see when he gets back. Do we think uh, Madeline's going to be back at all in the future? Oh, I yeah. Think so. she has yeah. To be. yeah, definitely. Do you think it's a situation where she comes back since her finds her Scott seeks her out? Where, where are we going to go with that? I think anything's on the table. Really. I'll tell you that I'd be more, I'd be down for more Goblin Queen. I'm a big yeah. fan of Goblin Queen all of a sudden. <laughs> I was surprised that they did the full comic act or they like clothed it like a little bit more, but I was surprised how much they did that. And even with Sinister around, just like a 
like scary villain on her own right you know mm-hmm. it was great like she's just popping off like when she goes to hug scott and then she kisses him you're like oh yeah. scott like be careful he's not man. gonna forget that kiss you know <laughs> no he's not anytime he kisses the real gene he's gonna be thinking about that yeah that kiss too <laughs> yeah i i absolutely loved the goblin queen and the like the, the fight scene in like that monastery church like thing like that, that that was just some of the best action I think I've seen in the show in general. Like just like the close up animation that they had, all the different effects, um, the Goblin Queen's powers, like just really putting Magneto like up against the ropes, and like mm-hmm. Magneto is just so all time like like he's just such a top tier character power wise, um, and like he was just yeah he was getting beaten on. Um, on the ground, like his his costumes ripped, his abs are showing, he's all bloody. <laughs> oh yeah. Rogue was, oh, absolutely. Rogue was like in that shot. No, I, I, yeah, I, I just really liked the whole fight sequence with the Goblin Queen there. I love the look. I love the just aesthetic, like the the darker, almost like gothic type type theme of, of I get like just like the church. In fact, we got uh, we got magic in here. Yeah. <laughs> morph, 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 morph. My gosh, morph, morphing into it's morph magic. Into yeah. <laughs> um, magic. No, that that was great. The kind of two versions too, right? Like the standard version, and then like yeah. the kind of Goblin Queenified version, which was yeah, really that sweet. was sweet. We got a variant of magic that was that was sweet, and uh, I love when when Scott uh, sniped her on the cheek, and then like just get a blood splat on the yeah. ground, and then, and then she does like a little lipstick thing with it. It's just mm. so mind bendy, and I, I think that was right before actually she uh, lays one on him. So <laughs> all of that was. That was an eleven out of ten for me. Like that, that was just so mind blowing. I was comparing it while we were watching it, Shay and I, uh, to like Vox Machina. That's the uh, the Amazon Prime animated show, and highly recommend that show. There's great animation of all the combat, and this this really much this really felt like it. Nice, yeah. I, uh, I, the, I what was the other the like, other character that Morph transformed into is like I forget like her name, six but like arms, right? Yeah, like that the. One? It was Mojo's lackey, right? From yeah. those those two episodes, I forget her name, but that Me was too. funny to not a deep cut that I expected to no. be seen in this. Who else are we gonna get? You know, I'm so interested. I'm still feeling confident about my Deadpool pick. If we're getting some of these people, I still think there's yeah. a chance. More I like that every episode. It's just gonna be probably a couple of transformations in there at least. I was gonna say, I hope Morph never ever turns into Jean Grey again because I feel like that'd be a very mean joke to Scott. You know? Yeah, I think true. that should be off the table. <laughs> Too soon for that. Well, Morph speaking... is just really dark humor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> inappropriate jokes at all the wrong times. Well, speaking of, we got two appearance of Xavier. We got to see, see the flashback of when he met Jean, who was holding, mm-hmm. of course, a Cyclops doll. So very fun foreshadowing. And then we get to see like that. a nightmare version of him. His face. <laughs> What does he off. say? He's like demerits for you boys. <laughs> yeah, like, he was. I didn't realize that was him. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 nightmare fuel version of Xavier. But again, I like that they're keeping Xavier in the show, but not having him. So I still think he's gonna appear at the end of season one. But there's part of me now that is a little convinced he might not, because with him being in every episode, there's two ways you can go. Either that's a reminder of like he's out there somewhere, or it's like well. We don't have him in the show, but we still want him to be around. Mm-hmm. So, and I kind of would prefer that. I still think Charles can come back, but if they were to even save it for next year, that'd be fine because there's so much going on. I don't know if Charles yeah, is needed I'm right now, but uh, yeah, like in all the uses. And like I said, the fla- the it was great. They had the little flashback of showing Jean using her powers, and you know, the will you fix me? And you know, there's nothing wrong. The, the classic Charles beats we know and love, but we haven't got that in this show seeing Jean as like a little girl in that state, mm-hmm. like meeting Xavier for the first time. Right. So, um, yeah, I really like the touches of using Xavier, but yeah, more mm-hmm. of, uh, they should not turn into a uh, Jean gray anymore. Definitely Keep not. Going. Yeah. Yeah. Keep I, that sequence, uh, with, well, I love first they're like, Jean, you can't, you can't go like, that's too risky. You, you might get hurt or something. She's like, well, only my mind is going, whatever she yeah. says there and just sends her vision there to break down the goblin queen. And like that whole sequence is so good. The animation of it. I loved how trippy it was going to these different realms and just how like, first of all, like earlier, I guess in that hell sequence, when Jean like comes down like an angel, you know, in hell, yeah. uh, just this <laughs> angelic light coming down, like very on the nose there. But then like, I just love how Jean turns herself into like a giant Cortana, like this big blue light. 
and just kind of has Goblin Queen in her hands and slowly gets in her head and like swallows her up at one point and she's like swimming around yeah. in there and births her out. It's like this whole trippy sequence and it just feels like an acid trip, but it's like the perfect way to throw her off balance and get in her head and and it worked. It, it changed her back. It made her realize who she is and how she doesn't have to be uh, but controlled by um, Mr. Sinister there. So yeah, that whole sequence was was so good and so fun. That was like... I think there's like there's just peak gene in all of X Men for me that I've seen yeah. like uh, in any movie or any like the old show like even more than that Dark Phoenix stuff I just I just thought the sequence was really really interesting and did some yeah throwing some backstory in there some origin story stuff but then also just really establish who this character is I think it's it's so fun so I definitely hope we see more of this uh, Madeline Madeline Pryor right I hope we see more yeah, of her Madeline down the road Pryor, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Anything, well, I guess the, the only thing I forgot to mention about with Morph is, uh, again, talking about being an asshole, they decided to make this joke at Gambit's expense where they say that Rogue is testing her stamina <laughs> with the new leader. Oh, yeah. And then they flip through all the training. Uh, so it did wow. seem, though, at least, though, when they got back to the mansion, they were like they were on patrol, but obviously Gambit's mind is not going to Yeah, they're patrolling that. something. Yeah, they're but again, we don't cheeks. know. Because uh, Rogue did go over to Gab and ask him what was wrong, and then shit was going haywire. So I'd really like that next week. If not next week, because I said, yeah, the episode next week is, uh, what was it, Mondetto or whatever? It's Mondetto and Life Death. So we're probably going to get some That's of Storm stuff, right? And I don't know how much we're going to get of the Gambit stuff because I think I know what this episode is coming up, and I don't want to spoil it, but I think it's going to be a fun one, more on like a more lighthearted. So at least next week or the week after, I do want. A conversation soon i don't want a whole season of rogue just or gamut kind of like biting his tongue not saying anything even if it's just him like kind of telling rogue to piss off because you've made your choice and it's not me and they heard me oh he misunderstood you like i hope that's coming soon but i'm fine because there was so much happening this week you couldn't do it then so i like the little shades of gambit just feeling uh insecure and just we don't see that happen a lot with Gambit because he's always so confident. I feel like the only time we saw it was maybe when we met like his family and those like the the, the I can't remember what they are, the, the Guild Assassins. of Thieves. Yeah, the oh, Guild of Thieves, thieves and then his Assassins. like wife that he almost like his fiance. I feel like that's the only time we kind of saw see like saw him shook. Now we're seeing him a bit more okay, not as confident. So uh, yeah, I'm interested to see, but yeah, they are spending a lot of time together. So I don't know, maybe I'm reading that wrong. Maybe they are just boning it up, and uh, Gambit is just. Uh, just uh, can't schedule do is pretty it. sus when when they were scrolling <laughs> through. Yeah, and, like it's just Rogue and Magneto, Rogue and Magneto, like back to back to back. I'm just like, I can't believe the show is doing it's this. Excessive, like, even, yeah, really. <laughs> I was I was pretty shocked. And I then mean, of what? course when um when Sinister's or I guess it's Goblin Queen doing like the nightmare scenes, like the first like he's already might have some suspicions, <laughs> and then he goes in the room just sees them like naked holding each other of course they start like blending together but still just like that is the last thing you'd want to see yeah in the danger room i mean you can set any kind of setting you want so it's just the two of them in there i mean oh yeah they could i mean sky's the limit really so do we think that they, they touched hands each other right last week but they didn't kiss right they just touched they hands boned. they boned is that what past. you think happened that's i think they're definitely happen. hooking up for sure 100 percent. i this one yeah, there's one person that you can like actually touch with your skin, yep. and he's very handsome, very attractive. We saw those abs in this episode. Like, oh, yeah. he's got good core strength. That hair, yeah, but Gambit, and he's the boss, top. so there's some nepotism in there too. <laughs> yeah, if you can get is. something out of it, Gambit with that crop top though is looking pretty good. I'm gonna make the prediction. Who knows? Maybe it's a show that they won't confirm one way or another. But I'm gonna make a prediction. If they do draw a line in the sand. She did not um, go as far with Magneto. I think she's going to show that her heart is still with Gambit. That's my prediction. Taylor, are you on the bone side as well? Or are you with me? Yeah, I think that they're they're Jeez. just fucking hard. Bone saw is ready. <laughs> yeah. no, That's what he says when it's time. I think uh, no, I, I can't. They're going to find a way. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. But we'll see. It makes it interesting. We'll. Uh, I feel like normally. If, if, Normally, I, I would be with you, but the way that the show has just kind of gone like more in the mature direction that I've expected has been like, man, maybe they are actually. And then, of course, they had the schedule thing in this episode. Like the this episode, is I think, the, sold is, it. The, yeah. is the smoking gun. In my but I think that, yeah. that could also be a red herring, right? That could just legitimately be them training because they're they got some like, power. If anything, why, do they like, to, why do they need to train only the two of them? What, <laughs> well, else is, what else is Gambit doing in the mansion, Travis? What is he doing? Sitting well, around all day? 
If my he's playing Ukrainian. basketball, he's cooking, you know, because Gene can't cook right now. His bang um, yeah, beignets. His beignets. Beignets, his beignets. Yeah, his beignets. But also because we talked about last week, Rogue was the most welcoming of Magneto. So it could just be that of the team that no one wants to practice with Magneto, right? You're so innocent, Travis. I'm not so innocent. Magneto's I'm the just... leader. <laughs> what, you think he's going to, he's not going to want to get acquainted with his uh, his teammates powers and if they don't want him no yeah. like i think i think he, if he's he, a leader he, they do whatever they see whatever if he they, says but he has to let them come to him if he just in this episode he's connection. ordering them all around he says you and you and you you go f- chase true. the goblin queen i'm gonna go do this and Rogue, they all just do it me. even cyclops is like yeah yeah whatever you well, say maybe it's a big new choice then maybe he is still trying to bone her but that's not happening i'm <laughs> saying put, put it no way, bone Travis. happened so no bone you, happened you've got years and years and years of gambit just like four playing and just teasing Rogue and Rogue just getting super horny. Just needs that like that intimate sexual release. And finally, the man who can touch her comes into play and she's just ready to just but that, eat him alive. But uh, first of all, <laughs> very poor choice of word. Uh, but second of all, the way you laid it though, you kept saying Gambit's name. So Magneto is not Gambit. So sure, it can scratch an itch. <laughs> but at this point, she just, she just, yeah, she needs a big itch. He, he can't Magneto close. She needs a closer right now. He can't close. She does, but Rogue <laughs> has shown many times that she's not that vain anymore. She's not going to go down that route. So I don't think so. I don't. I think that is a red herring. That room thing. I, I do not think they're getting it on. I think they're gonna. I, I think they're going to do a lot of big build up, especially with them touching each other in that vision. Like, I think they're on purpose trying to make you think that. And then Rogue is, that's going to be the big jump that, and I could be wrong because Rogue has bared Magneto's children. So we could just have another baby in the mansion, right? Yeah. I could be wrong, but that's where I love the storylines that there's multiple avenues. I just think that how we talked about in the series where they're really wishy washy of K is rogue and gamut a thing or not and they're both times where they both kind of went off and flirted with other people i think that's what this is going to do is establish them or we're going to get a fucking cliffhanger and we're not going to get this till season two but i'm i'm on no tell me everybody I, if you're in the no bone team the thing is like I, I i if this was the start of this show and this is a new series yeah i think i would see your point more where that's like why would they introduce this gambit stuff if it has no meaning but i think they have to do it to some extent they have to touch on it and play with that expectation because we had five seasons of this uh but now they want to go like a new route with it but they're not going to just like not touch on it at all um and show that mm. like what else is gambit's storyline going to be this season so far you know with every other storyline we've talked about there isn't really a lot of room for like a big gambit story and like there's That's only true, nine episodes so like this... is he going to get a, another you know about on the bayou sort of episode with him and his, his lackeys there like i think this could be maybe his kind of subplot for the most part through the i season. agree with you but that doesn't mean rogue still has to sleep with magneto right she could just be thinking about it doesn't mean she's actually done it you can do that same storyline and not have them bone. That's what I'm saying. Open so what? next week's episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get those sounds. I'm pregnant. <laughs> From the danger room. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say, Taylor? Well, so she thinks about it, but doesn't act on it. So yep. she just tell Gambit, like, yeah, I've been thinking hard about just fucking Magneto. Well, but I'm no, not doing it's, it. It's a classic triangle, right? But I feel like it. she had some of Magneto, and the reason she would probably lean on Magneto is there is that physical connection, but... I think it's going to be that she still loves Gambit more. And that's the only thing. Like, if her and Gambit could touch. What's the love about Gambit from her perspective? Bad boy. And I know Magneto's a bad boy, but too okay, far Okay, yeah, boy. you're going to say that no, Gambit's no, no. a bad boy. What about what about Magneto? Let me there, tell you about Asteroid M. Yeah, there's a difference Asteroid between <laughs> bad boy and bad person. And I don't think Gambit was ever a bad person. Magneto has many times this been a bad This outfit that he person. has this season, he's that's a, a bad boy outfit. Magneto's yeah. a victim. Now he's a bad boy, yeah. And I just feel like there's He's a, a deeper connection. They got five years worth of, you know, I, I'm telling you it, that I, Gambit and Rogue will prevail. There'll be no bone zone yeah. for Magneto. Maybe, maybe if, Magneto, he, uh, if he plays his cards right, maybe he can uh, swing. Maybe the they're going to do some thing where Magneto is going to be in the room and he's going to put some force field around Gambit. And that's what they're practicing. Just so Gambit can have bone. <laughs> he's Rogue. just going to be a condom. Yeah, because exactly. he's like, oh, I, I, I'm all for your guys' love. And he just <laughs> so he has to be there to watch, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you know what makes He's more sense you know what makes more sense is morph could do that because morph can use other people's powers so he could just use magneto's powers and do the force stuff right 
Uh, yeah, I, so. I don't know if you want to. So they're Morph both cocks, room, though, right? Well, yeah, Morph's I, definitely a Morph cock. I don't think Magneto Morph's is in there. <laughs> yeah. Magneto would not want to cock, unless he, like, because his love for Rogue, he will do it for her. And there's just many awkward nights in the mansion where Magneto has to sit in the corner where Rogue and Gambit get it on. Four people enter the danger room, <laughs> two people get off. Yeah, <laughs> five people come out. <laughs> and then Wolverine goes in there, he's like, What is this smell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like it, bub. <laughs> Morph stays in. Morph stays in the room. Um, is there anything else on this episode? Because I want to throw out a, f- a theory that I saw online, not mine, but anything else specifically on this episode? Um, just uh, one last thing on like the, I guess the throne area that the bat, the um, the Goblin Queen was in. I'm just such a sucker for like a big bad just sitting in a throne at the top of a staircase. <laughs> like there's hot. not really there's not really a purpose for it. It's just like no. leading up to where she is, but. Fuck, I just love that imagery, especially when she just like struts down the stairs, does a little hair flip before just yeah. fucking popping off on our heroes. I just can't keep doubling down enough on how badass that sequence was. I loved it. Good stuff. Good That's like it. Sauron, Lord of yeah. Rebel sort of Fuck stuff, yeah. you know. Their Tower of Baradur. Mm-hmm. Uh, my only two notes is when they were talking about uh, getting rid of the baby or sending to the future, they had this great shot of Scott looking down, talking about Nathan, and he was in the visor reflection. So I really like that. And then also there's this little moment that obviously they were, I don't know why I said that twice, they were talking about Morph, and you know, Morph was talking about how they had this experience, like Dylan alluded. They go back to the old like drape eye and everything. So when they get to the base, they show Morph looking really nervous, and if you watch it back, Magneto checks on them and is, and like kind of gives them a head nod and a little pat and then they yeah. go so i thought that was like a really nice moment for magneto to show that okay the team has to kind of still curve to him and he might be a bit more of a brutal leader but he's also evolving as well and becoming a bit more softer because i feel like even when he was leading the brotherhood of mutants he wasn't like you okay saber tooth like you okay Ro-? Yeah. like like i feel like he is trying to be softer now you could say maybe that's rogue make him softer but either way i like it was a little touch that Morph needs a little reinsurance. Rogue's not making him softer. Rogue's not making him <laughs> the opposite, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Ro, uh, Ma- Morph needs a little more reinsurance than the rest of the team because they went through some, like, a year or season worth of fucked up shit with mm-hmm. Sinister. So I thought that was a good Magneto leader moment, and Magneto is going to really need to step up because Storm's gone and Scott's fucked again. You know, like, <laughs> like man, he really when, has uh, to be the backbone of that team now. When we had... Um... I guess it was clone Gene, like when the other Gene was there, and then everyone's sus of who we thought was the original Gene, but the clone Gene, and then she turns to Scott for like just some like backup, some help or whatever, and like, you know, like fair enough from his perspective, he's pretty just shocked at the whole situation, especially if Beast is (laughs) is revealing the science behind it and all these things, but like I really like just how that scene was done as well, just from like. I guess it's Madeline's perspective of just this one person that you think you can trust, like the father of your child in your mind is just kind of like turning his back on you. That was, that was really well done. But yeah. man, w- just when she, when she turns to him and it's just like storm would have believed me. And then she just walks <laughs> off. I'm like, man, poor Cyclops. Like he's just always getting compared to Charles to storm. Yeah. <laughs> and, like he's just, he's never compared in like a, like a, a like a higher position. It just always seems like someone's like, you're not as good as this person or this person would have believed me. And, yeah, that, that one cut deep for uh, poor Scott. For me, at least. And uh, Dylan's name, I did like Magneto. Just be like, he said, blah, blah, you brimstone clone. Like, he just yelling this out. <laughs> like, yeah. not, not no uh, democratic value there. But, uh, yeah, it's just a small one I saw because I was scrolling and whatnot. I'm not on Twitter most these days, but I usually, like, for the lunch break, a little time, check some news. And I saw this tweet, tweet, and it was saying that you remember the senator or whoever that lady was that was running on the treadmill talking to Gene mm-hmm. and yep. Scott. Blonde uh, their theory that was going around and getting some likes was that that could be Mystique, and I was like, oh, you know what? That wouldn't be a terrible scenario because where is Mystique? And yeah. you know, she's always in that sort of stuff. So it could be nothing. But I just saw that and I wanted to mention it because I was like, oh, I'd actually like something like that because I don't know it'd be a fun way because I do want Mystique to get back in here. We know Nightcrawler is in this show at some point so i do think there's still some unleft juice to squeeze out of the rock for nightcrawler rogue and 
mystique because I think we talked about that last season, right? Where Nightcrawler was like, I don't know where my mom is, and she's just like walking off in the distance, like, oh, she's just right there. So much like with the gene and the skull and the baby situation, how we got deeper into that, I think there's a chance. So I, I don't know if I fully believe it, but I thought it was a fun theory to shout out. So I love yeah. the theory. Shout out to the, as well. the Twitter Somebody, user who proposed yeah. such a thing. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Anything else? We're thumbing mm-hmm. up now. Does anyone not have two thumbs? I've got two. Or does anyone Way have less than two thumbs? I think we're I've all on the two right there for you. Two yeah. raging Little hard gamut thumbs. Jubilee. Yeah. Jubilee. Yeah. And Jubilee Sunspot, they're on the or Sunfire, what what is it? Sunfire? Sunspot. 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 Sunspot, yeah. They're on the couch, watch the movies getting close, so nice to see mm-hmm. them hanging out and eating some popcorn. Happens. Yeah. So we'll be back next week for oh boy, who knows what's gonna happen next, but it won't be boring. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.